What is up, you guys? Welcome to Word First Radio, the podcast brought to you by Word First Ministries. I am your host, Jacob O'Neill. And as always, I'm joined by my friends, Cameron and Bailey. Hey, hey. Bailey, pray us in, man. Of course. Jesus, as we um, talked about last week, the world is confronted with um, a big problem. And um, we know, we believe that you are the answer to that problem and that you um, offered yourself to make a way for us Um to find relationship with you once again. Um, so Lord, this week, we just pray that you would be um, treasured more deeply in our hearts from this conversation. Lord, I pray that we would appreciate and remember your work um, from you as a baby to your departure um, as a resurrected king. Lord, I pray that we would remember your work and love you and appreciate you all the more for it. Lord, we come to you today in your name. Amen. 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 Uh, excellent. So last week, uh, we had a really great conversation, I thought, yeah. uh, talking about uh, the first couple pillars of the gospel. And this is kind of just like a, a framing way of communicating the gospel to an unbeliever and mm. uh, kind of defining them. And we, uh, we left off the conversation talking about sin, uh, mm-hmm. talking about what is defining the problem of sin uh, and yeah. why, you know, it matters like for mm. us that we are in this wrong relationship with God. Um and that was kind of uh, intentional on my part to kind of leave it on that note because uh, uh, hopefully brought people back to watch this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not all there is to the story. It's yeah. not all there is to the story, right? That we're just separated from God and yeah. mankind is just hopelessly in their sin wallowing. Mm-hmm. We are, but God had a response to that, right? Mm. Yeah, so we haven't yeah. talked about justice. We've, what we've kind of done is like, we've thrown on the table the bad news part of the good news. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the bad news is God is is perfect and virtuous and good and wise and just and, will, and wants relationship with us that requires the same things from us because God only has perfect relationship. And we we all are guilty of sin, which separates us eternally from God. And that's in a, in a, um, a place, an existence called hell. I don't know. I don't know that we want to talk about that, but no, not necessarily. But what that is, scripture describes it as, as the second death. Like that's ultimate Mm. death. When God said to Adam and Eve, on the day you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. That's what he's talking about is like spiritual disconnection from God almighty who made us to be, um, to be with him forever. Mm. So there's the bad news. And the bad news gets even worse is that there's not anything you, you can do about it. You're, you're already guilty and you can't become unguilty of, the of the transgression of the past, um, right. you know, like we've talked about before, you can't you can't <laughs> murder a guy, and then your defense be, well, yeah, but you, sh- I shouldn't be, uh, I shouldn't be held to account for that because mm. there were a lot of guys that I did not murder at all. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. It's like no, no, no. That's that's already the expected behavior. Like the the baseline for not being pu- the for not being punished or not being held to account for murder is not murdering anybody. Mm-hmm. Right. But once you do it, you're a murderer. And now you're going because God is perfectly just. Yeah. Like judgment is coming for that transgression. <laughs> it's that's kind of uh, I like that uh, that. Uh, like as a conversation topic, <laughs> like <laughs> there are lots of things that people like try to do to kind of like solve the problem right. themselves. Mm-hmm. We talked about false religions a couple weeks mm-hmm. ago. Like there, people create false religions to try and solve the problem between right. us and our creator. People try and be a good person to solve the problem between us and our creator. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think it doesn't solve the problem, you know, kind of for those reasons is yeah. that, well, you know, you can't just walk to a judge and say, look at all the people I didn't murder. Right. It's kind of like that way with God. It's like, well, mm-hmm. I mean, I know my heart is corrupted and I want nothing to do with you, but I mean, mm-hmm. like, I'm kind of a good person, right? Like I treat my wife good or I, yeah. I, um, uh, I'm, I'm a good worker, like for my boss, right. I have a good reputation. Um, but like those don't solve the problem, uh, like at all. Those really? don't make you not a murderer, yeah. right? You don't, you, right? <laughs> those, those don't, those don't make you not guilty of the, yeah. of the crimes that you've committed. Well, it's, mm-hmm. it's like, it's not a secret at all. Like mm-hmm. we all know it. If we're honest, um, mm-hmm. every single person knows there's something wrong. There's a problem with the world. Like we have, uh, police officers, um, who 
police because policing needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, we have doctors who heal people because healing needs to happen. Like there's fundamentally yeah. something wrong with the world and there's evil that we commit. There's foolishness. Like you were talking about Taya last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and like even a lot of actions that we um, that we take can be just foolish. Like, yeah. We're not to blame. Um, like we're not. Um, we're not morally. Yeah. Morally uh, uh, culpable. Yeah. But we've done something mm-hmm. dumb. Yeah. 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 There's there's stupid and there's evil and they're not mm-hmm. always the same. Right. Yeah. And just like um, all of that needs to be addressed. Like mm-hmm. if we're going to live in the kind of community that God intended in the beginning and intends still at the end, um, then we have to be like wise. Yeah. Like we can't be foolish kids who walk without looking where we're going. Mm-hmm. Um, whether we're two years old or five years old, like whether it's because we're foolish or mm-hmm. because we're sinful and don't want to listen to dad. <laughs> um, Celia does that. Yeah. Um, My kids. Yeah. And then, so I'll... Called out. If it's okay, I'm going to read a thing too. Mm. Oh. Just because... Um, so I think this really... Um, you can't hear these words and um, not know that they're true. Mm. Like this accurately describes the world and our experience in it. Um, So this is uh, from Micah 7. Um, uh, It says, How miserable I am. I feel like a fruit picker who arrived here after the harvest. There's nothing here at all. There's Mm -hmm. nothing at all here that could satisfy my hunger. The godly people are all gone. There's not one honest soul left alive here on the planet. We're all murderers and thieves setting traps here for even our brothers. And both of our hands are equally skilled at doing evil. Mm. Both mm. of our hands are equally mm-hmm. skilled at doing evil. Wow! And that, like, oh, gosh, yeah. I love it so much. Yeah. Um, because it's if we're lying to ourselves, then we're blameless. Mm-hmm. And um, but if we're honest with ourselves, then we know that there's a problem with the world, yeah. and more importantly, that there's a problem with every single one of us. Mm. Um, and that's so you have to explain. Yeah. Like, so people ask Christians or, or people who believe in God in general, like you have to explain where evil came from. Well, fair enough. Mm. But so does everyone else. Yeah. So when you, when you mentioned Bailey, that we have like we have doctors who fix bodies, and we have uh, police officers who are meant to um, uh, enforce law, en- enforce law, something like mm-hmm. that. But like people are being bad to each other, and we want them to to help with that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just um, that's really profound. That's really profound that that's true. And yeah. C.S. Lewis, uh, what he noticed, and other people did too, but he put really, really beautifully. And I'm going to butcher that too, but it was. People don't like people don't just of course we love evil but no one's pursuing evil. People pursue the their perceived good. So why do people hurt other people because they're pursuing some uh some good that they perceive over and above the harm of other people or if the harm of other people is what it costs then it's worth it to them. But nobody says I just do evil. They pursue mm-hmm. something that they think is good which might be their own pleasure, which might be their own status, mm-hmm. which might be their own their own wealth and health or whatever. Like you think about people hurting and harming one another. They can get, every person can give you a justification for why they did that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that it happens ever. Maybe it has, but I don't know that it happens ever that somebody says, well, no, I hate, like I hate murdering people. I hate it. It's gross, but I'm pursuing evil for the sake of evil. Mm-hmm. Right? It's, mm-hmm. Even, <laughs> even psychopaths will say they murder people in order to feel normal or whatever. Like mm-hmm. everyone's pursuing right. what they think is good from their own perspective. And when we, when people are so, if everyone's doing what they think is good, and we look in the world, and and the one constant thing about humanity is how awful we are to each mm. other, then what does that say about our view of what's good? And it says that exactly what Scripture says that sinfulness and wickedness comes from inside of our heart, and mm-hmm. it works its way out into our hands that our that both of our hands mm-hmm. are equally skilled at being at commit what is it equally at skilled evil. at doing evil. Mm-hmm. Both of our hands are equally skilled at doing evil, and the evil starts in my heart because as I'm doing evil with my hands, it's pursuing some perceived good that was that was born in my heart and if if uh if god is not part of your worldview you have to exp- you have to explain you have to explain that thing mm. so that's why I, I mentioned i asked the, the question like when when somebody does uh i asked somebody do you do you always perfectly keep all of your moral commitments and they say mm. no and i say well why not mm. well because what's inside my heart is is bad it's turned it on yeah. itself i pursue mm. something that seems better at that time there's something i wanted more or worship more something like that yeah. Yeah. Well, I love it. And so um, I think it's a really great, um, you know, 
to ex- more kind of expand our view of like the problem and and it's just yeah. really great way of putting <laughs> so, it. That's kind of all the bad news on the table. Yeah, all the bad news on the table. <laughs> um, but what is like God's solution to it? So everyone is doing what is right in their own eyes, mm. right? That's a biblical term. Mm-hmm. Everyone is kind of following the desires of their heart. And that's kind of been a theme in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. But uh, if we look at it from like historically, like, there's this theme. Jeremiah is like, your hearts are bad. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel is like, you need a new heart. You need Mm -hmm. your heart ripped out and a new one put in. David in the Psalms is like, my heart is, is sinful. And I was wicked from my conception. Mm -hmm. Like I am, I am just head to toe. Like that's who I am is wicked. Um, And describing humanity in that state. So God looks at that. And what did God do in response to that? Obviously from a Christian worldview, we think, uh, we believe that he came in the person of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Let's unpack that. <laughs> that <laughs> like, so. Cr- the, there's so many different things to talk about. Yeah. But let's talk about just, re- let's zoom in real quick on that as some kind of solution to man's mm. problem. Yeah. Um, well, the only solution. The only yeah. possible. Yeah. As yeah. The solu- yeah. And that's mm. one of the things we should uh, yeah. definitely talk about. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Do you mind? Let's go ahead and just start with you on that one. Um, what? I think it'd be good for you to start because oh. I love how you described this. Um, he is God and he didn't sin. Um, yeah. Like I love how you always go into, um, <laughs> like I can't adequately describe why it's so important that Jesus had to be sinless. Mm. Um, yeah. So please, yeah, I so, love when you describe that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, there's this uh, big fancy word uh, that historically um, Christians have used to describe God coming as a human being called the incarnation. Mm-hmm. It's a doctrine uh, in the area of Christology, which is the ology of Christ. That's <laughs> <laughs> the study oh, of Christ. Thank you. <laughs> Christ. Um, and so uh, the incarnation, basically, if you want a, a really biblical um analysis of it, read Mm. Philippians chapter two, I think is like the most, is like the best biblical, like solid biblical explanation of the incarnation Mm. that Christ um, existed in eternity um, as part of the triunity of God. (laughs) um, And he did not consider his equality with God, something for him to hold on to and to be like selfish about, like, this is something I need, but Mm. he willingly relinquished it uh, to become a human being mm. and he um, uh, gave up uh, or veiled is another like kind yeah. of, you know, Christian right, academic yeah, so, way of so if you know, <laughs> no, Jacob is trying to thread a real narrow needle yeah. <laughs> about the God of the universe becoming man without ceasing to be God, but while legitimately so, becoming human. I'm trying to explain something that's <laughs> and really he's got technical. heresy on both, exactly. on both sides yeah. of him. That's what I was just saying. <laughs> what I'm yeah. trying to, re- to, to, uh, uh, explain it in a way that, uh, people, everyone can understand, hey, but also not be a heretic. We've got three guys <laughs> yeah. and one of them turns into a human. Oh, yes. You're not wrong, but you sure ain't right. So there is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So there is a, a part of uh, his glory as God that he had an mm. eternity that he did set aside to become a human being. Right. And he. So when Jesus was walking around Jerusalem, he did not glow. Right. Mm. He uh, like God was. Does. This is gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like God. God yeah. does. Right. He did not glow. He was. Um, there are some people that would argue, and I would. This is going to sound very controversial. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I should because <laughs> I might do it. I might have, not have time to explain it. Okay. Jesus, as a human being, was not omniscient and not omnipotent, <laughs> <laughs> and he was not omnipresent. Then we have a hypostatic union of God of his yeah. two natures, <laughs> human and divine, <laughs> both of which are complete and perfect. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, but so I, I, yeah. I am willing to say. <laughs> That Jesus, as a human being, uh, was not omnipresent. He was not right. everywhere. He was not both in America and in Jerusalem. He was a human being in Jerusalem. I am actually willing to say that Jesus, as a human being in the incarnation, did not know everything then. Well, maybe he does now. Maybe yeah. we'll say this, so we don't have to. You, so you, <laughs> poor you don't have to try and explain because you because you don't know. Like who could? This is one of those things that is probably going to take all of eternity for God to explain to me and uh, uh, yeah. for me to understand it. That's fair. Mm-hmm. But it's how. So we we believe certain truths, which is that the that God did not cease to be God when he became human in the incarnation. That's right. So yes. when he became when he I came promise at, I believe he didn't came cease as to an be infant. God. <laughs> he came as a real human called Jesus. He did not yeah. cease to be God. But he also became fully and legitimately human. Yes. So he was 
totally and completely and essentially human and totally and completely and essentially divine and how in, in one person and how the how you have two natures in one person is a mis- an unfathomable mystery mm-hmm. but we don't believe it's, like if if Jesus was a carpenter like we're all of his like we're all of his Miters just like perfect, you know, like, or, <laughs> yeah, or, right. I imagine and, all of his chairs perfectly balanced. Right. Yes, yeah, that yeah. one doesn't wobble at all. Or when the, the kids are picking, never it's, your chairs never wobble. Kids at school Jesus, are it's crazy picking kids for kickball, like Jesus always picked first, <laughs> yeah. he always kicks home runs. So, I think so. The principle but, is, but at the that, same time, yeah. he, he, the, there's a heresy called kenosis where, where that's to say that God became human. And emptied himself and of ceased, all, divi- ceased, ceased to be, be God, God. Yeah. and was emptied of all divine attributes in every sense. And that, of course, is false also. Yeah. How it works, we don't know, but that's right. And those so are the, the two principle. things Jacob was trying to walk so, between. Trying to walk between is yeah. really hard. And yeah. I appreciate you recognizing how you, difficult buddy. it is. Yeah. So the point is the, the reason why I even brought that up in the first mm-hmm. place um, is because uh, God legitimately became a human being. The way that the Athanasian Creed puts it, an early Christian creed from the fourth century, is that he is truly human Mm -hmm. and truly God. So Jesus uh, bled like a human being. He got sick like a human being. Was tempted like a human being. Was tempted like a human being. He went through puberty like a human being. (laughs) And so he um, was truly a human being. And I think that's so important that it kind of, it kind of sets up this picture of like, uh, it kind of removes human beings' excuses yeah, <laughs> to yeah. sin. So like w- we're tempted to sin on a daily basis, right? And so is Jesus. Mm. I think when Jesus really became a human being, he was like really tempted to sin. Well, yeah, yeah but he's God. So he wasn't like, he would have never done it, but mm. you know, he was tempted. No, mm. I think he was really tempted mm. to sin, but he decided, no, I'm going to follow God's will and not, you know, my, mm. not what's happening in my flesh. Mm. The human, and yeah. And so uh, the um, it was right on the tip of my tongue. The uh, important thing is that God can sympathize with the life that we live. Right. Hebrews four says that that we have a high priest that can sympathize mm. with it. And he's a man of sorrows, mm-hmm. right? Mm. Uh, and God knows what it's like to be a human being and mm-hmm. came down to have that relationship with us. This is what was on the tip of my tongue. He lived the life that we could not live. Right. Mm. He came down and lived the life that all human beings are uh, expected to live of their creator in perfect relationship with him, mm-hmm. walk in perfect justice and in moral uprightness. Mm. And we can't because yeah. we don't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> we can't and we ain't. So yeah. even if we could, you haven't. So. <laughs> yeah. And Jesus lived the life that we could not live. Right. It's yeah. so important that we uh, communicate that when we're talking about the gospel right. and not be heretics. Um, <laughs> but it, it's just such an important central mm-hmm. aspect. Is that it, what you wanted me to say? <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of. I thought of like a good way to mm. kind of uh, summarize what you were trying to say there. Mm. Um, like if both of our hands are equally skilled at doing evil, mm. then Jesus's hands truly were both equally capable of doing evil. Mm. Um, but he never, you know, ac- actually practiced or became skilled at doing evil yeah. like us. Yeah. Um, Cause a skill just, is different than a talent. It doesn't say yeah. like our hands are equally talented at doing evil. Yeah. Skill is something you have to train and mm-hmm. work at. Mm-hmm. My hands are equally skilled at doing evil because they do evil all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, that theory, like you have to get 10,000 hours in to become a master oh at yeah. any <laughs> subject. That's what my hands are like with yeah, sin. PhDs and, and, mm. and sin. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Um, I was wondering more, and this is kind of putting you on the spot with a question, but like, um, that's fine. How do you answer if you're in an evangelism conversation and someone asks you, well, why is it important that he doesn't sin? Like, what is, what's the Mm. point of that? Why, why does some human being have to live a life without sin? Like, how does that address um, my sin or, yeah. Oh man. I know. I'm sorry. So there's lots of ways. (laughs) There's lots of ways you can approach that. Mm. I think the one that um, uh, I can kind of just pull the rabbit out of the hat (laughs) real quick and say Mm. that in an ultimate sense, it mattered because of his sacrifice uh, and uh, what he did to redeem us uh, Mm. from sin. And so he, Christ, being the only innocent person who has ever lived, being sinless, came to live a real human life, being tempted of sin and resisted, 
so that he could offer himself for the sins of humanity. Mm -hmm. And so there's this kind of reasoning that um, I, I, I tend to agree with that uh, it actually, you can uh, argue that Hebrews, uh, the book of Hebrews kind of, you know, uh, talks about this, that he mm. is a worthy sacrifice right. because of his sinlessness. Mm, yeah. So because we are sinners uh, and stand guilty before a holy God, mm. we, and it's and justifiably so, the hammer could come down and say, you have to pay for your sin. Mm. You have to pay for your sin. You, you uh, violated my laws and now you are guilty and you have to serve a sentence. And that sentence is, you know, separation from that God. That sentence is eternal. Eternal yeah. separation from God. And what Christ did, he says, I will on their behalf live the life they can't live, mm. die the death they can't die, which is a mm. perfect death in right relationship with God. And he, what it is, is that a clean slate, which is what Christ had, mm. our dirty slate is now completely attributed to that one. Mm. And so as Christ being sinless, what was important for that was that he could now take the place of a sinner mm. and say, Cam's got all this debt. The sin debt lined <laughs> mm. up. Colossians 2 uses mm. that, that imagery. And I'm going to take that debt and your sin and the curse of sin that's upon you. And Christ took it upon himself. And the reason he could do that is not just because he was God, mm. but because he was considered worthy because of the life that he lived and was sinless. Um, I hope that's kind of what. Yeah, can I, do you mind at. if I take a crack? Please. So yeah. I think, so you're absolutely right. I'm going to try and say it in a way that I think makes even more sense to me. Mm. And it's by way of analogy, and analogies always fall short, but come with me. So, Jacob, you're exactly right. So, when in our sin, we incur an infinite debt, right? Because mm -hmm. I can't have unsinned, right? I can't, <laughs> I can't have not sinned. So, yeah. so now here I am on this side of the on this side of the canyon, the one that's separated from God, and that's going to happen eternally. Uh, and what I want to do is get is to get back on the other side. The only way that that can happen is if my sin is forgiven, and so a substitute has to stand in my place. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna torture two different metaphors but you can imagine you're on trial for murder and i'll imagine that i'm on trial for murder and bailey shows up and goes you know what judge i'll go ahead and serve his sentence for him right and we have to imagine in this metaphor that the sentence for murder is life in prison it's death it's mm -hmm. eternal right it's maximal and he goes i will serve cameron's sentence and he goes get out of here you're already serving your own like mm. justice isn't done. Right. You're you're serving a sentence for your own murder. Justice is not satisfied by then saying, "Oh yeah, this counts for Cam too." Right? Any more than I put down, I guess in Norway it's like 10 bucks. Put down 10 bucks for a burger. And you go, "No, no, but, but Jacob's counts too. My 10 bucks is going to cover both of our burgers." Mm. It's yeah. like, "Well, no it doesn't. He has to pay for <laughs> he has to pay for his own." And the problem that we have is we have an eternal, we have an infinite debt mm. that lasts for an eternity. So who possibly could be the could say, "No, no, no." I'll take I'll take that. Well, it's got to mm -hmm. be somebody who doesn't have his own eternal his mm -hmm. own eternal debt to pay. Right. The only person who could that could possibly be that is uh, was well the only person who has ever done it or could possibly was Jesus mm -hmm. because he because he had he's the only one who never incurred that debt himself. So he's the only one who could pay it. Now you can try to your point, Jacob. You can pay for it yourself. Everyone is responsible for his own sin. Mm -hmm. You can try and pay for it yourself, and that's hell. Hell is in eternity, trying to pay for your own eternal debt. And it takes infinity. You guys, as we've done ministry together, I've given the example a million times, right? How, if you have a mil, if you have an infinite credit card debt, you pay a million dollars a month. How long is it going to take for you to pay off your infinite credit card debt? Still infinity. Still infinity, right? <laughs> That's hell. Hell is no matter how much you possibly think you could try and pay. It's you taking the weight and the breadth of your own debt and trying to pay it yourself and how long does it take it, it forever it will it's impossible it will never happen um so you have to have uh, just in a logical sense you have to have a sacrifice that itself that you have to have a life <laughs> that can be sacrificed or can be paid on on your behalf in order to be in order to have that debt forgiven yeah. who can who can pay the eternal debt except the one that has an eternal bank account, as it were. Um, <laughs> yeah. But to flip our metaphors again, let's go back to let's go back to the one who stands condemned as a murderer. It's only conceivable that somebody somebody else could pay your way if um, if they're not already paying their way, right? Mm -hmm. The only way the only way that your time in prison counts for counts for me is if you've done extra. Mm -hmm. Not, not uh, you can imagine a coach as um, a professor. There's one of my professors <laughs> who talked about. You imagine a coach who uh, makes tell someone he has he's got to do push-ups, 
And Bailey can say, it's all right. It's all right, coach. I'll take Cam's push-ups. Well, he's got to get on the floor and start doing push-ups. Mm-hmm. He can't just say, yeah, the 30 I cranked out earlier, just count, just charge those to Cam. No, no, those were yours. <laughs> Cam has to do Cam's. And if there's going to yeah. be a substitute, it has to be somebody who can add Cam's push-ups to his own count. And mm-hmm. only Jesus can do that because he has a zero count, right? Yeah. He's the only one not guilty of sin. He's the only one who doesn't stand condemned to death because the rest of us stand condemned to death. He's the only one with life in him who can then give his life and pay for our infinite debt. I'm going to mm. stop. I'm torturing. I'm badly torturing metaphors. Well, nevertheless, it helps me to understand. And the second answer is that so he could properly reflect God's character too. <laughs> 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 no, thank you for that. Because I was... Um, like if I'm trying to put myself in the seat of someone who's being evangelized to or hearing the gospel, yeah. Um, the part that like I didn't get the um, reasoning or logic behind it in mm. your explanation was the like why he's worthy um, to be a sacrifice in our mm. place, mm. Um, and that like totally addressed that like um, the Old Testament sacrifices and all of that or. Um, us uh, paying for our own sin and hell. Mm-hmm. Um, like those are $5 small contributions. Mm-hmm. Um, but Jesus being God and also being without sin um, mm-hmm. is the only one who has a bank account equal to God's bank account. Right. Yeah. 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 So what I've, what I've said to people evangelizing is something along the lines of like, um, I can't die for your sins because mm-hmm. I've got mm-hmm. a whole bunch of my own. Right. Mm-hmm. And so if I, even if I wanted to, as a Christian, I do have, um, I because I recognize from biblical revelation, like this, what's at stake if their sins are not forgiven, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, and Christians often say this too, like, oh, yeah, no, like I would love, to, I, I would do anything I could to get you out of hell, but I can't pay for your sin, mm-hmm. I, I can't mm-hmm. do that. Um, but Christ can, but and I know he's, he can. Yeah. yeah, he is worthy to do that because he has no sin, no debt of his own, right? Um, and so our debt and our sin is attributed to him. Uh, on our behalf on the cross. Right. So, wow. And, yeah. <laughs> and that's, and yeah. that's also, I mean, so it also is related to God's justice. Yeah. Um, because the sin can't go. Can't, so each of us has earned death. Mm-hmm. So Jesus had to like do all of our like eternities of death. <laughs> so he did oh. that. Thank you. Um, yes. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I mean, that's, I shouldn't be flippant about that. That's borderline blasphemous, but I mean, we have this idea yeah. that Jesus spent a few hours on the cross and as though that sure. was the punishment mm-hmm. for sin. That was not the punishment for sin. Right. That was a reflection. Like that was a gruesome look at how terrible sin is. Mm. It was a moment in time we can look at with horror and shock and see a very, very small, um, a, a very small measure of the cost of mm-hmm. the sin of humanity. But Jesus' time on the cross is not what paid for sin. Like That's that right. was that was how he died. It showed us how brutal sin was. It was kind of a reflection of a sacrifice, a fulfilled prophecy. But I can, like, there are people suffering today, right now, like at this very minute, people suffering worse, oh, forgive me, Lord, but for suffering worse than Jesus did on the cross. Mm-hmm. That's fair. I mean, I think, Imagine being crucified on fire. Yeah, crucified on fire. Than being being crucified, I mean, yeah. people, you, I'm, I won't even have to say any of the terrible things, but you can imagine something that's worse. Yeah. Yeah. So the cross is the cross is just like a, um, it's just like an image for humanity to go, yeah, oh my gosh, that's awful. But the price that Jesus paid was not mm-hmm. it was not a torturous death. If that was it, then then we could imagine paying a torturous death for one another. Like right. if that's what puts you back in a relationship with God, we could we could do that for one another. The price that Jesus paid for our sin was swapping his perfection for our imperfection and suffering separation from God that he's never experienced in all eternity. And like we've talked about drinking from the cup of God's wrath, mm-hmm. which sounds I even sometimes I'm I'm shy to even say that, although yeah. that's true of God. But if your ears aren't tuned, if you don't know who God is, that makes it sound really, uh, really awful and terrible. As though God's just uh, God's anger, angry and pouring out His anger. Well, that's true, but it's because God is just, mm. and we can imagine again, like we can go back to the trial room, and you can imagine someone who's committed the worst kind of horrible, atrocious crimes. And uh, let me back up one step by saying, so some people might ask, well, why why wouldn't God just forgive? Mm-hmm. Right? Okay, so why does it have to be this whole gruesome crucifixion, death? But well, I get the bank account thing. Okay, so he's a human and God goes, okay, there's a human who did it. Whatever, I, mm-hmm. I count that. Well, it's because God is just also. And so like there's a reason why we celebrate in a certain sense when a bad guy gets, gets mm-hmm. uh, sentenced, 
we're like, okay, justice is justice is being done. Like this deserves attention and response. Mm -hmm. And if the judge, I mean, we had the Nuremberg trials, right? We had Mm -hmm. the trials for, so, so Hitler probably killed himself. Uh, But then we have the trials for all these various henchmen and, it would not have been good enough if the people who presided over the trial went, you know what? Forgiven. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Price, I just forgive him. Price yeah. bed, I, I forgive him. Sentence mm-hmm. served. Mm. We'd go, whoa, yeah. what? That's a, we have a word for it. That is a miscarriage of justice. Yeah. Mm. Or there's a sense when uh, you have uh, some horribly evil person who like shoots a bunch of people and then takes his own life. Mm-hmm. And we go, Justice wasn't served. Like he needed to stand up in front of court and he needed to have justice done. But he mm. took the opportunity, uh, the opportunity for sort of the rest of society to have justice. He took that from us and justice was not carried out. So the, so God being perfectly just and wise and good demands justice for all, for all wrongdoing. Mm-hmm. And so here's the thing is all of, all of that wrongdoing for all humanity for all time has been paid for. Mm. by Jesus. Like he got, mm. Bailey, he got your sentence. Jacob, he got your sentence. and he, Cam, he got your sentence. He got my sentence and yeah. he paid for it, which is infinitely mm-hmm. more unbearable than the, the most like torturous death that we're aware of. Infinitely more unbearable is that he took your sentence. Mm-hmm. Took the wrath of God and, on himself. D- yep. And whatever that yeah. whatever that amounts to, and Jesus knew well what it was, mm-hmm. he took the he took the punishment and the sentence and the con- condemnation rightfully reserved for each of us. He took that for all of us, for all people, for all time. I really love how um, Galatians three puts it. Mm. I've been uh, thinking about this for a long time. Is that um, in order to redeem us from the curse of the law, which is that mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the curse of sin. The curse of the law, which is that we are unholy. God is holy. We can't live up to it Mm. as much as we try. Christ became a curse for us. Yeah. For cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Mm -hmm. And what Paul's doing there is he's actually quoting Deuteronomy. I believe it's chapter 21 where it says everyone who hangs on a tree is under God's curse. Mm -hmm. He, he, the curse that was rightfully like, sentence to us that could that was our punishment for sin mm. he took it upon himself he took upon himself god's curse and um so uh, for people who aren't christians uh, on the outside looking in i hope that can kind of like frame for them why we sing things like amazing grace or mm. that of god's amazing love yeah because not only don't don't we deserve it it's just like I am an innocent man, an innocent God mm. took my place. Like, and looking at it on this side, like with the Holy Spirit, with a new heart, it's just like, it brings us to tears. It brings us, it, like it's sober, it sobers up our minds. Yeah. May, we have to reflect on it, like, like with respect and reverence that it's just kind of like this, it's this amazing, wild, like, just unfathomable, unfathomable, uh, uh, yeah, unfathomable. Can't, it can't, this love cannot be fathomed. Yeah. <laughs> it, Here, you do your uh, lips, you do your lips, and I'll say the word unfathomable. <laughs> love that God, that God would do that. The only innocent man who has ever lived mm-hmm. decided it's like I will. I'll take it upon myself. Mm-hmm. That's how much God loves us. That's how much God loves sinners. Is mm-hmm. that despite you hating me despite your heart being corrupt, despite you wanting nothing to do with me and not wanting to live in right relationship with me. I still, after all this time, mm-hmm. want to live in right relationship with you. Mm-hmm. And he came down to uh, show us that in the person of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that has uh, significant implications, believe it or not. Well, that's <laughs> and, right. And now we've cracked into the good news part of the good news. So that's, yeah. we talk about the gospel. Gospel is just a word that means good news. And I love in, uh, in Norwegian, they still call it uh, evangeliet, mm-hmm. uh, the good news. It's, it's, uh, when in Greek, it's evangelion, right? It's the oh, good yeah. news, um, which is where we get evangelism from. So, uh, which I really just appreciate. But anyways, we've, we've broken into the good news. So, what, so there's all this bad news. The bad news is you're forever eternally separated from God. It's your fault. You can't fix it. Mm-hmm. 
and what is it going to take? Like, okay, so I have an infinite debt. That's awful. Um, how does that get fixed? Well, somebody, you need to find somebody who can pay an infinite debt. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that has to be like an infinite being, right? In our metaphor, somebody, an infinite being with an infinite ability to pay debt. Mm. Um, there's on, there's only been one of those and only possibly going to be one of those. And the good news is it, it's been handled. It's like it's, mm-hmm. Jesus said, it's, it's finished. It's done. He's done. He's taken all the wrath. The, the wrath for sin stuff, it's, it's finished. Like Jesus mm-hmm. took, Jesus took all of that and then gives us a choice again, right? So <laughs> our, our initial parents had a choice and that was, am I going to follow God or, or not? Am I going to obey or not? And now Jesus gives us a choice and he assures us that his burden is easy. Like you don't have to be, I'm going to go back to something I said a little bit earlier, right? And that's mm-hmm. the question when somebody admits to me that they have failed to live up to their own moral standards and I ask them why. And I think what I hope to do or what that does in my own life is it reminds me that I'm chained to my own wicked heart. It's like, because my heart wants this stuff that hurts other people. And I pursue, like I say things that I don't mean, or maybe I do in the moment, but uh, they were, but come back, baby. I didn't mean it. Right. Mm. I say stuff. I don't mean, I do things that hurt people. And, and I, I express unkindness and, and I'm short and, and acidic with, the people that I say that I love the most, right? All the ways that we fail. Mm -hmm. And and you go, why, why, why do you do that? And you kind of go, well, because no one's perfect. And is that a good, that's like such a not good enough (laughs) answer. Well, but just because I could, I mean, I did. I'm only human. I'm only human. I'm only human. You go, what does that mean? And I think we can all admit that means I'm chained to do these things that I know hurt other people, that I know are wrong, that I know are bad. And we have all of our own answers to try and solve the problem. Most of them are political, right? Which is Mm -hmm. like just politics is just one of the worst things that people do. It's us trying to fix the world by human means. And you already can't just be loving all the time anyways mm-hmm. like no nobody can do it and so but anyways that's a totally different rant i'm gonna <laughs> spare us from now um we have all these ways that we try and try and uh solve the solve the problem ourselves, and we just realize we just we just can't like i'm chained to this thing i and paul talks about it oh what a wretched man am i right i, I keep mm-hmm. doing what i hate and i can't do what i want to do and i do all these I do all this gross stuff and I have this high moral standard and this ideal for what life should look like and I fail. And even when I'm doing my best, that's when somebody goes, oh, I'm doing my best. That means I failed. Yes. <laughs> right? if I, uh, it means you're not doing your best. Yeah, that's it your teacher. You if your yeah. teacher gives you an F on the paper, she doesn't write, you did your best, right? <laughs> right. It's that's F. So, good. <laughs> so I'm mean, doing my best means I failed. Uh, we recognize that our best just isn't good enough. What our best produces is failure. What our best produces is not the life we want to live or the world that we want to live in. And Jesus promises that he will break us from that. And we still have a limp. We still have residue of our former life. But he says is, follow me. And my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You mm-hmm. don't have to be burdened by the guilt of your sin anymore. You don't have to be, you don't have to wonder about your, your fate and your destiny, like all of that stuff. We've talked about it now on like five different episodes, but all that guilt that lives in the stomach of humanity, mm. where it's like something's wrong, it's got to be fixed and I've got to get rid of desire yeah. or I've got to pray toward Mecca five times a day or I've got all of these things that I have to do or I need to be good to everybody. And what was the, what was the thing that you saw in the mosque? Yeah, love to everyone and hate for no love one. Love to mm. everyone and hate to no one. Has anybody ever done that? No. no. Why not? And they can't, <laughs> there's no rational answer. It's just because there's evil in my heart because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, because I'm only human, which is just to admit that there's mm-hmm. evil in your heart and there's the weight of grief and guilt knowing that there's evil in your heart. And Jesus says, I'll take care of all of that. Mm-hmm. And you come, come with me and I'll improve you and I'll, and I'll, I'll make you better. And I'll give you a, a new ability to, to see what breaks God's heart and to understand what's wrong. And you'll, you'll learn to have new, new desires and you have your heart and your mind replaced. And you don't have to bear the guilt of uh, bear the guilt of your own inability to live perfectly anymore. Your own inability to live up to your own moral standards. You say, mm-hmm. "What's the point of life?" And they say, "To be good to ever to love everybody and hate nobody." Are you doing it? Well, not I'm doing it. my best. I'm only human. Yeah. Okay. Well, why not? Because you're incapable. And how does that make you feel? Well, I need to have all these things I need to do to make me not feel so bad about it. And Jesus takes care of all of that. And he doesn't give you permission to continue in sin, but he does say, look, we're going to work on the moral stuff. You're, you're mm. going to get better. 
follow me, be more likely me, become a disciple, which is a, is a pupil. A disciple is just, and I know we use it as a churchy word, but it's someone who follows the teaching, wisdom, and instruction of somebody else. You're like an apprentice. Mm-hmm. Become an apprentice of Jesus and learn to be learn to be like him in, in every way. So we've talked about that too. When we say when we say we're Christians, what we mean is that we endeavor to emulate Jesus in every way, in every in every possible way, right? We'll never become the second person of the Trinity, but in every way that he modeled the perfect life, we'll do that. Mm-hmm. And so all of that is bottled up in the good news. You don't your your punishment has been taken. What Jesus calls you to is discipleship. Become an apprentice of Jesus. And you can let all of that stuff go. There's no more condemnation. He's taken your sentence. And when you're guilty, you can you can find purpose in the guilt, which says which is to say that I shouldn't be like this anymore. Like I need to work on that thing. Mm-hmm. And I need I need to love people more and hate people less. That's a that's a good and it's a high ideal. But it's not the point. And you can't do it without Jesus. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> you you uh, I would say you wound me up and blame blame it on you. But it's something that I and all of us are really, really are really passionate about. Yeah. And then that's the good news. Not that there's this megalomaniac megalomaniacal God. Maybe this time I'll do my lips and you can do the word. Are you ready? <laughs> We're gonna do megalomaniacal. Ready, said. Megalomaniacal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> megalomaniacal God who wants to get everybody. If he wanted to get you, he would have gotten you. He wants to welcome you into relationship with him. And you've made yourself, you've made it impossible to be in relationship with you because God is just and he is good. And so he himself came and sacrificed his own life. Well, the second person of the Trinity came and sacrificed his life, which is a double sacrifice. God sacrificed his life and God Almighty sacrificed the life of his son who is God. Mm-hmm in order to purchase relationship with humanity, right? Mm -hmm. And, and to, to break the curse that we ourselves put on the universe. Yep. Like that, that's the good news. And if you're, if if, uh, I I get, I get um, maybe frustrated, I get disappointed sometimes when I hear people um, talking about who Jesus is and doing what in their mind is evangelism or gospel presentation. And it misses, it Mm -hmm. misses all of that. It doesn't talk about who God is. It doesn't talk about why we're separated from him and that we've done it on, uh, we've done it ourselves. And it doesn't talk about what Jesus actually did to fix the problem. Right. Um, it's almost like, like begging people to, I'm just begging you, make Jesus one of your friends. And it's like you, you've missed the whole history of the universe mm. and you can, and, and uh, lift somebody unable to understand what it is that they're actually doing, right? Uh, counting the cost of becoming a disciple, becoming an apprentice of Jesus and not understanding the price that was paid on their behalf, not even understanding the depth of the debt. That's like, you know, like you never showed them the bill. (laughs) It's like, here's the problem. See that infinity sign. Like you can't pay that (laughs) off. We don't show them that. We just, we ignore that because that's kind of icky and it makes it feel like God's a mean guy. It's like, no, no, because God is good and because he is just, you now have an infinite debt that someone else has to pay and that someone else has to be like this, this, and this. And, Luck, not luckily, but mercifully, graciously mm-hmm. for us, mm-hmm. Jesus was all of those things, and He did it. He did it, and He accomplished it. Okay, I'm gonna stop. No, yeah, and I, I don't, uh, and you don't have to. It doesn't take uh, an hour long podcast to explain yeah. it. No, you know, I, when I, uh, I've gotten through, um, touched all those points, you know, quickly, like in an evangelism conversation that mm-hmm. lasts. A half an hour, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, if I'm just talking to somebody like in a conversation with like, you know, people that I'm trying to share the gospel to, um, there it's it happens in one sentence in, uh, my favorite Bible verse in the <laughs> world, um, which is second Corinthians five 21. That's correct. Se- yeah. <laughs> second Corinthians five 21. Um, that says for our sake, he became sin mm-hmm. or he was, or he, God made yeah. Jesus become sin who knew no sin, who was mm-hmm. sinless, so that we could become the righteousness of God. Yeah. That's insane. That kind of gets into uh, our final pillar of the gospel, yeah. God's response to it. So um, what we need and what Christ offers is uh, his righteousness, mm-hmm. his sinless life yeah. attributed to us. Mm-hmm. All of my guilt and my debt and my sin was attributed to him mm. and he took the punishment for it. But his rising from the dead and declaring victory over mm-hmm. sin and death means that his righteousness, his innocence before God um, and sinless life can be attributed to me. That yeah. God can look at me, can look at Cam yeah. and look and see Jesus's life. That's crazy. So 
That's what we need. That's the good news. That's the answer to sin. Um, and what is the response that God now calls all people to? Right. Because so if, of that. If you've shared everything that we've shared with somebody and then you say, uh, do you like, do you want nachos? Okay. Let's yeah. go. Right. Like, <laughs> if you, if you leave it there, that's the, that's the locked pill bottle. Mm-hmm. And so you, you have not fully shared the gospel with somebody until you, until you invite them into God's family. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe there's, I understand when people say it, they say something like we're all God's children. In a sense, that's true because God loves us and wants relationship with all of us. But scripture says that we, uh, that we are, are given the right to be adopted as sons of God, that following Jesus is what, is what brings us into God's actual family. Mm-hmm. And so we have an opportunity then to invite people into God's family and explain what the cost is, which is the, the, the cost is that from now on, you live as a servant. You you live the purpose of life that we said earlier, mm-hmm. right? Which is to, which is to, um, oh my goodness, I'm all I'm all wound up. But to, to love, to, know and to serve. love, know and serve God. To know, love yeah. and serve. To know, love and serve God in this life and the next. Is that what you is that what you commit to doing? And then we take them on as disciples. You you baptize them uh, as a profession of their faith, and then we walk with them like brothers and sisters. This is what, this is what we do. We have now little spiritual babies, but if you don't, if you don't give somebody the opportunity to, re, to respond, to really respond, mm-hmm. say, okay, now, because, because otherwise you've done them a terrible disservice. Otherwise you've left them with the burden of knowing, like mm-hmm. knowing that this is what's in the universe. Now, once they know it, they have an opportunity to respond to it or to not. And if they don't, then they're still headed, headed for separation from God, which is death. Um, but you give an opportunity to respond in faith, which is the requirement of God in order to follow him into his family forever. I'll say just that. I, again, I've, I've said way too much stuff, but, but that, that's it. If you, don't, if you don't invite a response, a response of faith to, to therefore follow Jesus, you have, you have not completed your evangelistic duty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. What are some of your thoughts on um, that? Yeah. I would just reduce it to, because I like reducing things, <laughs> helps my mind that goes crazy in these situations. Um, repent and believe. Mm-hmm. Um, repent from your sin and believe in Je- like all the stuff about Jesus that we just talked about yeah. that like I'm sure every Christian listening, your heart mm-hmm. is singing right now. Um, yeah. Believe that mm-hmm. that is true. Um, believe that you're equally skilled hands at doing evil, that um, they can be replaced. And uh, like you can be taught to do righteousness, like Mm -hmm. that verse Jake shared. Um, That one is like mind blowing because it's one thing to realize that Jesus offers us like the, um, and a key to heaven. Mm -hmm. Like we get to go to heaven after this life. Um, But another thing to realize that like for the, um, guilty and broken man who hurts his family or, um, yeah, just people weighed down by the guilt that's on their own hands. Mm-hmm. Um, Christ now in this life, like offers that guy mm. a way to change. You guys take it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just so, yeah. So you, you believe and you repent. Repent just means turn away from your own wicked desires and follow Jesus instead. And now. And, and yeah, repent now. now. Repent now. Mm-hmm. And endure. And, and endure means be faithful. Con- continue to be continue to be faithful. Don't leave Jesus. He won't leave you. Don't leave Jesus. Yeah. I think um I think that's really good a, a good place to land it. Mm. Um and I think that just that compelling, like just beautiful thing that God res- is asks us of our faith in him, mm-hmm. trusting fully in Christ's death and resurrection, that, that is what washes us of our sin, mm-hmm. that that is sufficient to, um, to have God impute his righteousness to us, mm-hmm. like, and count that as our record is God's righteousness itself is, uh, th- is the most beautiful message uh, of all of history. Mm. And uh, we'll be singing about it for all of eternity. Um, And so I kind of wanted to read this Bible verse that I didn't have pulled up, but I kind of wanted to read this. Um, This is uh, 
from Revelation, <laughs> Revelation 5. And Revelation can kind of be a scary book for some people. And I think that like my theological mind, as I was answering your question, mm-hmm. I always want to like, you mm-hmm. know, make sure I'm explaining things correctly and go to all these different things. And oh, as I read this, I want to kind of like, let's not focus on like, the imagery or like the, that revelation is scary and that mm-hmm. there's all these kinds of things, but let's think about the principle behind this. Um, so there's some kind of scroll <laughs> that uh, is being offered to the lamb of God, which is Christ basically to begin um, consummating the war, the history and judging the world that he Christ stands now in victory as the rightful judge of all of eternity. And here's why. They sang a new song. They, all of creation, sang mm-hmm. a song saying, you are worthy to take this scroll and open its seals because you were slain and because with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe, language, people, and nation. Mm-hmm. You made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve God and they will reign on the earth. Mm-hmm. That's uh, the image we see of eternity. That's what God has invited us into. And so uh, I I could sing that forever. Mm -hmm. Yes, Christ is worthy because of what he did for us. And so uh, if anyone is watching, Lord, please, if anybody Mm -hmm. is watching who does not believe that message or hasn't ever really thought about it, maybe you've just been to church your whole life and have never really considered these kinds of things, we want to encourage you to recognize your sinful state, repent of your sin, and put your faith in Christ's atoning sacrifice for your sin. Um, Put your faith in him, and you get to spend eternity in right relationship with God Mm -hmm. and his people Mm -hmm. for eternity to reign together Mm -hmm. as priests in God's And you don't have to hang out with me if you don't want to. You don't have (laughs) to. let that keep you out. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so uh, we thank you guys for watching. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for listening to us unpack some of these very serious things. I feel like... The reason we're kind of quiet, not really like laughing as much is because, not because we're like, it's not a downer. I I, I could speak for all of us saying it's just because we are so taken aback by the amazing grace and amazing love Mm -hmm. that is shown to us. It literally causes us to shut up like Mm -hmm. a little bit, like and sit back and really consider it. So we thank you for watching that. I hope it uh, has that effect on you uh, as you consider the God of the universe and what he did to save us. And we'll see you again next week. God bless. Thank you for watching this episode of Word First Radio. If you like the podcast, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want to learn more about Word First and how you can support the ministry spiritually and financially, check out the links in the description below. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Word First Radio, and we'll see you again next week. God bless.